multiple places. Um, the newer tugboats are a lot shorter and uh, they have those D-drives controls and it's a lot more electronics, a lot more high tech. And for a tugboat in Portland, there's only two man crew. There's the engineer and the captain, which I thought was kind of weird since I thought there might be like four or five. And uh, what I learned about myself was that I'd probably be interested in working on a tugboat in the future. It's a pretty cool experience. And um, I learned that I enjoyed a lot more engine room work than deck work. So deck work is kind of like maintenance stuff, painting and um, making sure all the lines are good so they don't part off in big situations. And then engine work is kind of just like checking engine maintenance, like make sure your oil is good and all this other stuff. Um, and I learned I'm a lot more hands-on person than a paperwork person. On Tuesday we did a lot of paperwork for the tugboat since it's been going, to dry, going into a dry dock and it was not fun just sitting there and watch people do paperwork because I couldn't do anything. So I had no prior experience on tugboats at all. My motivation was I wanted to learn about tugboats a little bit in the industry before I go off to school next year at Maine Maritime. And uh, the challenges were finding out when I had to go down to the boat for jobs. Like I said earlier, there's no schedule. So I got a call like at 5 o'clock at night. I was hanging out with some buddies and he's like, oh, you got to head down to the boat right now. It's not fun, but okay, sure. <laughs> um, and then Thursday, it was like the same thing. It was like 6 o'clock at night. I was having dinner. He's like, you got to head down right now. Okay, whatever. I'll see you my dinner later. And so that was it for tugboats. For second week, I uh, worked at CBS Lobster and Bait on Union Wharf. And this is where I saw my lobsters to get my bait in the summer. Um, most Portland lobster boats deal with CBS because they're the easiest company to work with since you can get bait and sell your lobsters there. So it's pretty convenient not to write a check every time you go lobstering. They just subtract it from your what you make in the day. And it originally started around 10 years ago. It was probably the smallest lobster, or bait. they only did bait originally in Portland, but now they're probably the biggest in Portland with all their employees and um, how much land they have. And right now they're building a huge place in Gorm just for storage for bait, just for a cooler. So they got a lot of money. They got to make their business bigger. It's the only thing they really care about. So what I did, well, that is not really fun. I was originally going to go. Excuse the interruption, but just a quick reminder, seniors, as you finish your presentations, you should be taking your iPads and accessories down to the library to turn them in. Thank you. So, I originally was going to come here and kind of see like, the money side of the business, but the way they saw it was extra hands, just make them do all the hard work while we watch. So, I broke pollock heads, which they come in these, like, 50-pound bags, you have to, they come frozen, so you have to smash them up into a bunch of pieces and put them in these yellow exactics. And then from the exactics, you have to put them through this machine, so that machine salts them and puts them in barrels. Um, and this is exact, this is called the chute. I ran that for a day. And uh, they have a bunch of broken pallets we had to fix with hammers and nails, it wasn't fun. Um, and then a couple of days in the morning, the first thing we did was load lobsters that were caught the previous day in the trucks, ship them. Um, ship, a couple of them were shipped to York, Maine, Rockland, New Hampshire, Massachusetts. And most of the time, when you weren't dealing with fish, you'd drive around forklifts, which is kind of fun racing and stuff. <laughs> um, and then the average day at CBS, um, Usually lobstermen come in at 5 a.m. or go out at 5 a.m. So they have to be there at 5 a.m. usually. And then they end their day usually around 6 or 7 when the lobstermen come with the lobsters. Uh, they receive a load of fish every day to process it. So they can either sell a lobstermen or before it gets bad, they actually sell them to other bait companies. So it doesn't go bad and they can use it. Um, and they, since they're building, at a location, they're starting to ship their bait and lobsters to that place in Guam. So there's a lot of stuff moving around at once, and a lot of stuff coming in at once. So what I learned about the business of myself was different fish get treated differently depending on what their species is. Um, and he's, there's a lot of stuff 
do just so the like before the bait gets put on a boat, there's a lot of processes and stuff. Um, they actually deal with probably most of their competitors, so they just buy their bait by a certain price and sell it for a little more after they process it for their labor. And lobsters always cause problems because they always come in at different times. They don't really tell them when. And sometimes they do overnights. And so you'd be there like at 9 o'clock waiting for them to come in. you get a text saying they'll come in in two days, which is not fun. So we there for a long time. The inventory is really hard because they'll come in these trucks, but they always have too much or too little to fill up exactly the right amount. Right amount. So you could say they come in with 18 barrels and all the barrels are a little bit too full so you have to break them up smaller so there might be 20 and a half so it's kind of hard to do inventory but i wrote myself that i'm not going to work at a bait company ever again this is not fun and i do not want to shovel bait for a living it's very hard and not fun at all my experience i worked twice last year on some off days just to make some extra money Motivation was I wanted to learn about the background, how the side of a lobster business works. Uh, challenging, we're trying to satisfy the customer over your work schedule. So if a lobster came and get bait at 8 o'clock, a little later than normal, you'd have to stop what you're doing to make sure they could get their bait to go off. And then it was kind of hard to uh, plan. Challenging to have a plan, how do you things? Not you randomly throughout the day, so there would be trucks coming with bait unexpectedly, coming early just to make sure other companies were happy instead of you. So it's just kind of hard to know when people were coming in. And that's it. How long have you had your own lobster boat, Peter? Uh, I've had mine for six years, I think. It's my sixth year. 